Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel for another review video. I'm going to be looking at some metallic markers and some fabric paint from Arteza. So here are some photos from the website of the fabric paints. Here you can see a variety of colors. You can get them in a pack of 30 or 60 depending on the bottle size that you get. Here is the more handheld pen-like bottle. Again, this comes in 60 or 30. I'm going to show you some uh, pictures of the colors in total. Really, really big variety of colors there. And also some tips. You get different tips too uh, with these smaller bottles. The, the bottles I'll be showing today are the larger ones. Here are the metallic markers. This is a set of eight that I'll be showing you today. And here's what it looks like on ceramic when you actually have some talent. <laughs> we'll get into what I mean in just a minute. But before we do, I do want to put a short disclaimer out there. I am not going to be showing how these work on fabric. I am a paper crafter, and so I wanted to see how I can stretch supplies through my paper crafting. So um, if you are looking for fabric reviews, uh, unfortunately it won't be through this video, but I'm sure you can find more of what you're looking for on YouTube. Okay, so we're going to talk about today um, the Arteza... 30 colors 3D fabric paint, and um, we're going to look at those. And it looks like it comes with stencils, right? So if we pull that up, I think there's one here. And so you can use the positive stickers for something, and then you can use the negative to um, kind of brush the paint in. And then it also comes with, so you have letters, numbers, there's the rest of the letters. You have um, some flash, what is that, like a lightning symbol, arrows, stars, hearts, uh, some pretty cool stuff. And then you have a big pineapple uh, mustache and, you know, crown and I think leaves. So, yeah, so it comes with little stencils there. That's cute. And then you have a brush, two different brushes, two different sizes, cute, and 30 colors. So we're going to take a look at that. Now I'm a card maker, not a fabric person, but I'm really interested to know how I might be able to use this in card making. So we're going to try to see that. Okay. And then we're also going to take a look at the Arteza metallic markers. i um, curious about that. So these say non-toxic. Um, you get a bunch of different colors here. So we'll take a closer look at that as well. Let's start with that actually. So we're going to look at our, you get eight colors in here. And it looks like we have silver, gold, um, sort of like a goldish green, a green green. <laughs> These are all official names. Um, purple, blue, pink, and looks like a red or coral color. So we'll take a look at that. I have some black watercolor cardstock here. I'm sure you can probably use any cardstock. And you can also use these, I believe, on glass. That's kind of what they're cool for. Yeah, ideal for wood, fabric, CDs, plastic, ceramic, and glass. Um, nowhere does it say paper. <laughs> I'm a paper crafter. I gotta do it. All right, so what I'm seeing here is, let me zoom in. What I'm seeing here is there a thin, um, a, there's a thin bullet for you, which I think is really quite cool. So it's thin. Um, it's not there. They do sell them in big, huge, chunky chisel tip markers as well, but this one is not that. We, this is the more on the thinner side. Um, so we can kind of see that's cool. They do feel kind of weird on this cardstock. I'm not going to lie to you. Cardstock was not listed. Oh, look at that silver one. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so I'm just going to go through them. The gold, very pretty. That green one shows up really nicely. I'll give you a close-up here in a second. Oh, this, this green is brighter. So, that's going to be for on, on cardstock. So let's grab some glass and see what that ha what happens there. Okay, I just happen to randomly have <laughs> proof that I buy too many things. I randomly have glasses and mugs just sitting over in my stash. Projects that I have promised to do but have never made the time to do them. So we're gonna play with that for a little bit. Okay, so I by no means am I an artist. 
like by zero means am I an artist. And I'm not saying that to be self-deprecating. I mean, I have a very difficult time drawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a very simple heart on here. That's it. I'm just going to draw a heart. Oh God, I'm already nervous. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Okay. It's just a heart, Mary. It's just a heart. That's it. Of course I messed it up, but that's okay. Look, okay. I just want to see how they work. So let's say I take that and then I was like, oh, purple. Purple would be fun to color in. I'm actually just here to see how they go onto ceramic. Because that's what we're working with here. And you can pass this off as your five-year-old's artwork. <laughs> so yeah, so there we go. So they draw really nicely on a cr um, ceramic. So let's see how that dries though. Let's go to glass. I don't know if you can take this off. So like I'm sacrificing two uh, drinking cups here for the love of my review. Let's do, I want to do gold, this fun gold. I'm going to do um, my husband's initial. Hey, look at me being fancy. That's an R. Can anyone see that? Can you see that that's an R? Let's see. Yeah. Okay. I can probably try to do his whole name, but I won't. <laughs> but that's cool. Okay. So, okay, so with, when it's wet, it's wet, and it smears. So, it's really cool, though, how they go on so easily onto glass and ceramic. That's fun. We'll let that dry. We'll come back to it in a little bit. Okay, so we know that's good. We know that it's not intended. Again, it's intended for wood, fabrics, CDs. That's so specific. Um, plastic, ceramic, and glass. So really cool. So sort of like non-porous. Well, wood is porous, I believe. But like some of these non-porous surfaces. Okay, so that's the markers. I think they're cool, I think they're fun. I would like to use them to put accents onto some of my projects. I think my favorite one was probably this green. So like, if let's say I'm doing a card and I just wanna add like a dotted line accent on my black card stock, like that would be really cool. And it comes up, it shows up so nicely. So yeah, okay, so that is the, uh, those are the metallic markers. Okay, I'm back with my um, kindergarten art <laughs> to show you if it dried. And I don't know if you're probably not supposed to do this, but so it looks like it dried like if you rub your finger over it like that. But if I actually like tried to remove it, it comes off. So am I doing something wrong? Should you like heat set it somehow? I don't know. But, I mean, which is probably a good... Well, so, like, if I rub the red one, the red one's not coming off very much. But this one is. So, anyway, I wanted to make sure that I threw that in the video because I don't know if it's me or what. All right, let's get into playing with these on our paper crafts. So what I'm going to be doing here in sped up version, and I'm really sorry about the lighting. That's something I'm trying to learn with my new camera setup. So it's going to kind of go in and out. But I am going to be basically making these dots on this black cardstock so we can see how they show up. And I am going to be going through all the colors that I have. So there are metallic colors, there's a glow in the dark, there's neon, and there's regular colors. And so very, very wide variety, even with just this 30 set. I'm using the bottles for the fabric paint that look like um, the, like the two ounce, I believe they are. But like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can get these paints also in the smaller tubes. So it just depends on what you're looking for, what you want to do. So I'm going to continue on this journey here and just basically swatching them out. That's what I'm doing. I'm swatching them out. I like the texture of this paint. This does remind me, I mean, it is just like fa fabric puffy paint. Um, I was really, really impressed, and I'll show you as we go through why, 
but I was impressed with how they worked on cardstock. I couldn't quite get them to be perfect domes, but I found an alternative way to add them as accents onto my projects. So I'll show you that in just a little bit too. So here's a close-up picture of those colors. They're beautiful, beautiful colors, um, really opaque looking. This is black cardstock, so you know for them to show up, they're not transparent at all. They're very opaque colors. So we're going to get moving with the, the first project here. I'm going to pull out my stencils, and I'm just going to be pulling out some cardstock, some stencils, and I'm going to be putting these on with like a silicone palette knife. I would say palette knife. It's more like a spatula. And so I'm going to get everything set up. Um, I am going to spray my stencils so that they stay nicely on the back of my cardstock. And we're going to get going here. So I have them on my craft mat. First thing I'm going to do is the glow in the dark one. Um, what I do is just put this onto my craft mat, which is great. Craft mats are beautiful for this kind of project because they're very slick surfaces and they're very easy to clean up. The um, fabric paint went through my stencils very nicely, it went on the cardstock and with the spatula really, really easily. I don't know 100% that it's the spatula that helps, but this is kind of the first time I've been using it. Um, I started using it recently. This is just a silicone spatula. You'll probably find them anywhere. And so I'm using it because I wanted to see if that little bit of flexibility in it was useful, and it is. Now, some of these projects that I'm doing are not going to have finished cards at the end. Some of them will. I really just wanted to kind of show you the techniques as well. So here I'm taking a makeup brush. This is one of my older makeup brushes that I had spare. And I am using some of the metallic colors, which are gorgeous. They are just beautiful. And so I'm trying to pick up some of the different colors here and there. And I'm placing them through my stencil. Again, goes on nicely. This technique with a makeup brush... Um, with this kind of bristle was really fun to use as well. I kind of got to pounce the color into the stencil as opposed to rubbing it back and forth. So that was great. I'll show you the end results in just a minute. And now I'm going to play with the neon colors. So I think probably these were the most fun to play with. I have been in like an, a late 80s or early 90s vibe <laughs> lately. And it's just been really fun to, to play with stuff like this. So I'm pulling out these colors, and I'm going to try to mix them too. Now this is going on black cardstock, and I am just pulling up all of the colors. They go down great, as I've said, but you do need a little bit more, I think, than in your mind that you would think, because they didn't, they didn't spread as much. Um, I also didn't put a lot down at first, so I had to go back and kind of do it again and just add more. No issue. These bottles have a lot of um, paint in them, so I know I'm not going to go through them very quickly. But look at the way this is going down on this paper. It's beautiful. I was really, really excited as I was doing this. Now, the excitement wears off a tiny bit later on because they do fade back a little but on the white card stock, they do not. And so I do end up finishing the cards for this one and the white card stock um, that I show you at the end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned to see what I did with them. But look at how pretty. I can watch this forever. <laughs> like these colors are just so fun. They're not even just bold. It's the neon factor that's just amazing. All right, so the big reveal, look at that. Oh my goodness, so, so pretty. All right, so I'm going to put that aside to dry. Um, next thing I'm going to try to do is add some accents with this tool that I have. So these are for, I guess, painting like dots. My sister paints on lava stones, and she uses tools like this to do that and get precision. So I thought I would take a page from her playbook um, and try it out myself. And so I took a piece of cardstock, and here I'm just using different sizes, and I'm just dabbing them in the paint, and I am putting it on the paper. And it's, first of all, super fun. Now I completely understand why she does this, <laughs> because I could have dotted up this paper for the longest. So it's really, really fun to add some of those extra accents. Okay, moving on to another stenciling. This is not going to be anything new that I haven't showed you. This is just with a different stencil. 
and I'm pulling up that color. This time, what I did was I didn't want to waste that paint, so I'm essentially just kind of using it as like a catch-all, and I'm just going to put this this um, paint right onto this stencil. Some of it's mixing, um, some of it's just, you know, it's blending pretty nicely, but that little yellow bit up in the top left corner, I don't know what I was doing there. <laughs> I was just trying to put it down. I just did not want to waste this, so I'm going to put this card panel aside and use it at some point in the future. And I wanted to show you real quick that this is very easy to clean up. Again, you're on a craft mat, although I would recommend that you clean up right away. You don't let anything dry. Um, my makeup brush might be um, might be a wash for that one. I'm going to have to try to use some soap and water because I think I let it dry too long. So if you use a makeup brush to do their application, just make sure you use some soap and water really quickly afterwards and you should be good to go. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, so let's look at some dried products here, uh, some, some things that I did. Uh, you saw me use the stencil and then the neon colors. Okay, this is not as bright as I was hoping on the black. I thought it was going to be a little bit more opaque of neon colors, but wow, is it pretty. So this, I love this texture. This is, it did not warp. Again, this is card uh, watercolor cardstock, so maybe that's why, but... It didn't warp it. It gave a beautiful, shiny finish that's not tacky. And it's just like a subtle, really pretty color. And it blend blended really nicely as well. Didn't take too long to dry. I would say probably less than 40 minutes, maybe. I don't know if that's too long in your eyes. but um, And it dried pretty thin. So you get this nice texture, but it's not too overwhelming. Then on this one... Um, this one I did fairly recently. Now that showed up a lot more of a pop. So I didn't do this one on camera, but I did the same technique as I did with the black cardstock of the stencil and just pasting it on or painting it on with my spatula. And I got this really pretty bright neon colored panel. So that's going to be a lot of fun too. Also very shine, very shiny finish as well. And then um, over here you saw me do with the polka dots, which I thought was just a super fun background. Um, if you can get them in cir perfect circles, that would be even better because I'm touching these and these are the dried ones and they dry really well on cardstock, really strong. And um, yeah, so I mean like you get this really nice fun puff. It's like puff paint. If you remember like circa 1987. <laughs> With the where we puff painted everything, so that's a lot of fun. And then here they are on black cardstock as well. So I thought they showed up really well. Here's the finish of the leaves when I use the metallic colors. This is such a pretty finish. I don't think the camera is really picking it up, but it's very pearlescent. I love that you have your different golds, bronze, um, brown, just really pretty, very metallic color finish went pretty nicely through the stencil you can definitely tell that they are leaves and it's a very flat finish so I like that this was when I put it on with the brush quick thing on the drying time this actually took only about 15 to 20 minutes to dry I timed it better this time and I'm feeling it it's not tacky it's shiny uh, and it is dried already so it's about 15 minutes for drying Okay, so let's have a look at some of the finished products here, finished cards, I should say. So this one, I put a, a die cut in oval right in the center, just used a mirror cardstock, thanks. I really wanted that background to stay put. I didn't want to do anything with it. I thought the shine and the colors were just beautiful in and of itself. So I left that the way it was. I chose a mirror, thanks, because I thought that went with the nice metallic shine. And so that's how I finished off that card. This next card here, I kept with the uh, on the white card stock. I just cut it in half, left some space for a sentiment, and then used my round tool to put some of those little dots like we would if we were using some sort of glue. And I really, really love the way that that came out. So that was so much fun to do. These are so much fun to play with. Let me know if you have any questions about them, and don't forget that you can use the coupon code below if you are interested in something like this. At least try to get it for a, a more affordable cost, and you can use that coupon over on the site. 
Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you in the comments section. Hit subscribe if you want to see more from me. And there's a couple videos at the end of some similar things that I've done with other products. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.